I'm going to go ahead and uh, skip over the introductions because this is an important conversation that we're going to have here. As I have promised, this awesome audio, you see the title, Walter and Jane. I'm going to first start off by talking about something that I've I've saw a long time ago and uh, parting the noise in the background, trying to get all the things together. Some of you are familiar with the notebook. <clears throat> and uh, I'm not going to go down the story of the notebook, but I will say there was two catching things. I mean, two things that stood out in the notebook. Clear my throat here. <clears throat> Number one thing is the love of that man's life. I don't know what the main character's name was or the guy. There was two main characters. It was the uh, male and female who was in love with each other, basically. And they got older. And at the end of their life, they were still together. But the main plot of the story was in their younger years, the wife or girlfriend forgot her memory. She lost her memory. There's a name for that, for that memory loss. And the husband stood with her the entire time. He was patient with her and reading to her and and holding her hand or at least speaking to her as if he was her therapist. And he did this for quite some time. And uh, the story goes that when he was reading stories to her, he was telling her a story about the past life of a relationship between two people, which was actually him and her. But she didn't know that he was talking about him and her. She thought that he was talking about some other couple. You see where this is going? So basically that endured for an extended amount of time where he was going, he was going back and forth to the, I think it was somewhat of a nursing home or a home that she was living in because this was when she was older practically. And so he would do this for quite some time. Again, it was an extended amount of time where he was this person who would visit her and talk to her, read to her and leave. She didn't think too much of it. And so, as it progressed, I can't quite remember myself, it's kind of funny, if she gained her memory. But I'm going to say I think she did. If she didn't, well, pardon my uh, my uh, lack of knowledge on that. But um, I'm going to say she came too and remembered that, remembered who he was. And she finally figured out that this guy who's been uh, her therapist or seemingly be her therapist, this guy who would visit her every day, this guy, this elder guy who was being patient with her to gain her memory back was the love of her life. He was that guy that he was describing and reading to her from the book. And of course, I think it was, uh, I don't know how immediate it was, but towards the end, they, they both lay down in, uh, in the bed. They laid down with each other. They didn't, they didn't donkey duck or nothing like that, but they laid down to each other like the couple that they always was in the past. She finally remembered him and he finally got his wife back. He worked hard enough. He was patient with her. He was long suffering. He had unconditional longevity and an ambition to get his wife's memory back. So you got to know the pain of her not remembering him while he's standing in front of her, reading her the story of their life. Practically. You got to know the feeling of him speaking to her and she's just treating him as if he's just a regular guy. And then all of a sudden she remembers that, oh, you, it's you, you are my husband. 
And the realization was the most, I would say, use this word, beautiful part of the story. It was the most capti- it was the most captivating part of the story of all time. When they laid down in the bed together, as they always did, he gained the prize and she was where she belonged. Laying with her husband. And he draped his arms around her and they stayed in that position. They stayed in that position. And that was the end of that story. But I seen something myself in in the uh, physical world, the real life here outside of the uh, outside of the movies that it is not all too impossible to experience this it is not the end all and the be all for love and compassion or commitment or finding that one who is everything that you need or desire for them to to be you can have both you can have what you want and what you need at the same time if you make the right decisions It may not be all that you want it to be. It's not going to be 100% right. What usually is 100% right, but it's going to be 100% accurate as to what you need. And it's going to fit perfectly in your life. However, I was going to one of my, uh, one of my health food stores. And I looked over and I was looking at this elderly couple get out of the car. The woman pulled out of the driver's seat. She was an elderly, older lady. And I seen her first and uh, the energy just told me to look over there because I operate in energy. I operate in energy. I operate in my spirit. I operate in instincts. I operate in things that are non-physical. And I listen, you know, that being the Indian chief. And I just sat still and became, what do you call that, content with just a few minutes that I was experienced this display before me. This energy telling me I need to see this. And so she walked to the front of the car and she stood like near the passenger side to wait for this, the man to get out, this guy to get out. I didn't want to see, assume that I knew who he was, but apparently he had, he had struggles walking towards the sidewalk. He didn't have his cane, so he was older or as old as she was, and he was bent over a little bit. (sighs) Again, I wasn't going to assume. And uh, he reached out because he almost lost his footing. And she reached her hand over so he can lean on her hand. He grabbed her hand so he can hold his balance. And she pulled him to the curve, inch by inch, to help him balance himself. And I noticed, and I took my time to get out of my vehicle, and I walked behind them at a far distance. But just enough to just watch them. The watch To watch this notebook, real-life notebook scenario unfold before me. And I'm noticing that this man is leaning against her, and he don't have a cane. And he's still holding her hand and she's not complaining. Simply like this is an everyday thing. It's normal to her. And they walk inside and she's standing there near the door to grab a um, a plastic cart. And I didn't want to be I didn't want to be rude or startle her or or uh make her fumble because she was an elderly woman. And I'm a very masculine, very deep voice, you know, very tall, big guys. I didn't want her to, I didn't want to startle her to the point where to make her stumble or probably have a heart stroke or something like that. So I, I gently eased to her and just simply asked her in the lowest voice that I could muster and said, um, I don't want to, I don't want to be rude, ma'am. Uh, how are you doing? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm Leon C. Um, but I couldn't help but notice that um, y'all look very good together. Is that your husband? 
She said, yes, that is my husband. We've been together for quite some time. And I, I, I had to tell her, I said, this, it, you look great together. It's very beautiful to see you and him together at this time. Now, listen what I said. Listen. Listen to what I said. At this time. But I didn't finish it because for you who are listening, Neo, the finishing part will be at this time of your life. But I just told her at this time. It's a very beautiful thing. Keep it up. You look wonderful because it is rare to see this in this generation, in this time of America. In the westernized civilization. And I kept it moving thereafter. He wasn't standing there. He kept it. His, her husband apparently was standing in a different aisle while she was standing there in front of the door. But she didn't mind. She didn't mind helping him to keep his balance. And he didn't mind leaning on, leaning on her, on her balance, on her, on her ability to be rigid in order to make it to his destination. And I continue to think about that while I was walking through the store and I was picking up items. And I said to myself, I need to think deeper into this. Then I began to jump on the internet and uh, listen to various content creators, other content creators besides myself. And I hear how women talk about, I'm going to get the bag and I'm going to wait on being in a relationship. I am not, I don't want to be in a relationship because I don't feel like being in a relationship. I don't want to be content right now. I don't want to, I don't need to, and I'm not interested in, in being submissive. And I can do whatever I want to do. I'm young enough to have fun. I hear this on the often and I'm just listening and I'm still thinking about Walter and Jane the whole time in the notebook. And I came across another content creator who um, was talking about how women hold their clock so long to where they have no value to add to men at a certain point of her age. And many of them, they rather live alone. They rather live alone with their dog, with their PhD, with their college degrees, with their careers and have a problem with understanding and comprehending the reason why she's in that position. And so from there, I decided this I need to share with you, my people who are listening to the sound of my voice. Now getting on to the studies here or this lesson. Now we're going to switch over to another gear now that I have created the path for you. I get on the often from multiple people and it's never ending. It's never ending. From the ages between, I would say, I'm just going to say under 40. Where multiple people are saying that they don't understand why their grandma and their grandpa survived so long. How did they survive so long? They want a relationship who's going to last for a lifetime. They want to be like the notebook where this man has so much patience to be by her side, support her and to help her in her time of need, especially in her elderly years. They want to know what it required for Walter and Jane to be together in this day and to support each other in this day. I'm going to go ahead and take a drink and lubricate my vocal cords here. Because this is going to be quite interesting. I said a lot in the other audio. The audio that I said, uh, I think it was, I mean, I got the name of it. Uh, men lock themselves down or something like that. Men lock down their freedoms. Men lock down their freedoms. This one, I was... Uh, I actually promised that was going to come thereafter, and it, it, it is after. It is after the one. So that of the audio was before this one. 
See, what I understand, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you, because if you watch the other audio, if you listen to the other audio, you know where I am right now. You, I don't have to, I'm not going to go back and explain what I was talking about. But I said what I said about how it's good to be yourself and to be free and to be the man that you know you can be. And not sell yourself short, not bind yourself to a marital contract, which inevitably is going to end you or put you to shame. Is because there is no notebook experience. And what I mean is mostly when I say the ultimate all or a pan area, it's going to be it's going to be based on the majority. The majority wins the vote over here. There's always going to be an a conception, a, a uh, exception to the rule. There's always going to be two out of ten who is going to do the right thing or go the opposite direction. But it don't matter. When you are at war and it's only ten of you versus a thousand of other uh, enemies or the opposition, it don't matter that it's ten of you. You don't exist on the battlefield and you're not going to exist if you go up against the thousand. So regardless that there are some who do get married and they're successful in their marriages, listen, regardless if some relationships work out, you can have a open relationship. You can have a swinger relationship. You can have a share my wife uh, relationship or marriage. You can have a let's go see other people relationship. That may work out for you, but as far as human nature is concerned, it doesn't work out. For the entirety of the way things should be according to nature, if it did, the conditions that the westernized civilization would not be occurring the way that it is in its high swamp-like mentality where we are all confused. We don't know where the winds are coming from. We're having all sorts of different gender identities we have in all sorts of different names of relationships to the point where now we're still consider ourselves as married, but we living in two separate homes. But yet we're married and we're together. You got your own, you got your own home. Uh, she has her own home, but yet you call yourself Mr. or Mrs. Bright. No, you're Mr. and Mrs. Not so bright. But yet you say that you still married. This is the form of marriage. And you think it's quite well. That is an arrangement, ladies and gentlemen. But yet people are not only starting to do this, but they want to have their cake and eat it too. If I can use that sort of uh, expression or that analogy or that uh, ideal or sentence or concept or whatever you want to put it. <laughs> however, you want to, however you want to make the stew out of that. Most people want to have their cake and eat it too today. They want to be right and wrong at the same time and still get the proceeds and the results that someone who's doing it uh, the right way or the good way or the functional way or the way that nature had um, engineered the society to be or their nature to be, their origin to be, okay, or just as successful. You cannot expect the road to be brandished with gold and success and the potential of uh, greatness as much as that person who have uh, have involved and invested their blood, sweat, and tears to polish up that road and to meet the results at the end. What that means is when you are abiding by nature the way it should be done. Grandma and Grandpa abided by nature the way it should be done. They survived during the changes of the season. What that means is, okay, let me break it down for you. You got a people today, uh, this generation, who is expecting to find not only a high value man, that is the woman, but they're expecting to find a marriage based on longevity with the way that they're living today. When grandma and grandpa never needed to do that. Now, before I go forward, I'm going to go ahead and put a I'm going to put a gap in between because I'm going to make something clear with this audio versus the other audio. And then I'm going to get back to us talking about with uh, with Walter and Jane. OK. It's not that it is very important for me to have a variety. That's only part of it. 
it's not that I am saying that marriage is the the end of a man's world because it doesn't have to be what I am saying is it doesn't work in the favor of men the way that programmed men think that it should especially when they don't understand that they have a growth in life they have an ambition in life they have other things that they may be interested in are other women that they may be interested in are the one who she the one who he married when he thought she was the one because he got drunk on some Jägermeister and decided to donkey dunk with her one night and she couldn't she didn't want to go nowhere because he couldn't get rid of her and she came back or whatever else that she did because she was well in the bedroom or she cooked good and her donkey dunk was it was okay it was moderate it was a seldom thing it was it was neither here or there and because of his options because he have low options on occasion no I'm gonna say on occasion most of the time most of the time the average American person or man think well if I get married to this woman, I'm going to have donkey dunking every day, all the time, whenever I want it. He becomes deceived. That's just the hardcore facts. Because with that comes an attitude, it comes a change of her chemistry, it comes her mindset, and here comes kids. All that's going to change how he feels physically about her when it comes to donkey dunking to the point where there will be a point where it gets dry. But that means is I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the donkey dunk uh, uh, arena. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the interest of doing that with her, because she can be beautiful all she needs or want to be. Her hair can be as straight as Mulan's. Her skin can be clear as a clear blue sky. But if her attitude is bad, if she is masculine in her masculine energy, if she wants to give him what do you call that mercy hump meaning she has an attitude she wants to refrain from her donkey dunking with him she don't want to give anything up she wants she wants it her way and whenever she decides to give him some sort of sexual attention it's like cookies it's like a reward like okay good boy you did a good boy now you can have a a now you can get a little bit of satisfaction i'll lay on my back and let you do whatever you want to do but only for 30 minutes Mercy hump. Or I'll give it to you if you do well in the house. If you're paying the bills, I'll give it to you. If you're treating me, if you're taking me out, I'll give it to you. If you're if you're doing things on me for Valentine's Day and uh, you're acting well, you're being a very good beta male, then I'll give it to you. If you are complying to the feminized system, then I'll give it to you. I'm not giving it to you because I really want it like you do, but I'm just giving it to you just because I know that that's what you want. I may not want it like you do because I've had more experience than you. I've been out there since I was uh, 17, 18, 19 years old. You've been out there, but not as much as I have because I'm a woman. I got more experience than you. I'm already in the cookie store, in the candy shop, in the gift shop before you even get a peach fuzz on your chin. So I've been there and done that. You're just coming onto the scene. But I'll give it to you. I'll give you the donkey dunk. Because I know that's what you want and I'm going to use it for a reward system. But the moment you don't do what I want you to do, the moment you piss me off, the moment you act out, the moment you don't buy me anything... The moment I sense or think that you're going to lose your job, you're not getting it. So the remainder of these men, not only did they choose this girl for some strange damn reason that I have no idea what, not my business, because everybody has their niche. You know what you like about that person, but you decided to bunker up with them for the rest of your life for some reason. Whatever that reason was, there is always a, there is going to be some changes that's going to occur as I was discussing. So with that being said, 
multiple times, it is not going to be well according to today versus what it used to be. In the past, there weren't too many distractions. In the past, there was loyalty. In the past, there was a society that supported marriages and relationships. In the past, people respected people at least better or more than today. Today, it's a different generation. It's a different world today. It's a different humankind walking on the surface of human earth today. So the outcomes of surviving to be a Walter and Jane, the outcome to, to be together as long as grandma and grandpa, are you get what I'm saying? Requires a different fight. You have to fight harder. It was easier in the days before now, in the generations before now, because the society had a program and a plan. Everything wasn't acceptable. We had people who fought for a sense of morality and balance. And there was a sense of self. There was a sense of respect for nature and the universe that used to be. Today, multiple people, systems, marches, individuals, and those alike are doing their best to defy nature. They're doing their best to destroy the order of nature. They're doing their best to destroy the home. They're doing their best to destroy what love really means. They're doing their best to destroy truth because they don't want the truth. As long as you're staying asleep, as long as your home is separated, as long as you are disenfranchised, as long as men and women are at each other's throat, somebody's going to get paid. So there are hidden demons, hidden people, hidden contracts, hidden individuals, groups, and organizations that are working hard to make sure that you stay separate from what life is supposed to be between you and your companion. Therefore, you're living in an engineered society that's not based on you being Walter and her being Jane to survive at an old age even more so when you have you still have more than half that means more than half of the women who are talking about i'm strong and independent i don't want a man i don't need him he's insignificant to my uh diplomas he's insignificant to my career he's insignificant to me getting the back i'm just like cardi b i'm not going to cook i'm not going to clean and i'm not going to smell like onion rings So therefore, the future are seeing the end results. What did I say when I was standing next to the lady, uh, standing next to Jane? I said, at this point of your life, at that point, at the elderly point, at the point where you need somebody to help you, there is nothing worse than to be elderly and nobody wants to come and see you. It is a very terrible scene. It's a very, it's a... You know, how, listen, do y'all know how many people die alone? Have y'all been in a nursing home before? Have you been in a nursing home before? Okay, out of every place I, okay, let me put it like this. I've been in martial arts fights where it was, you sign a contract, you fall down, you can't sue, you get dragged out in a body bag, you can't cry. I've been in situations where, um, it's, again, you, you live or you die. I've been in points in my world where um, at the highest peak of a building or a skyscraper where when you, if you make one wrong move, if you, meet, if you move two feet away from the wall, no, I wasn't cleaning windows, so shut your mouth. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, a man, is, it, a man should not reveal all his cards. Am I stupid enough to do that to you or for you or anybody else? Suck it up. Anyhow, and if you make one false move, you're done for. You're going to be making a skydive, okay, all the way down to the ground with no parachute and nobody's going to come and save you, but they're going to scrape you up off the ground. You know, when you're on a, a roller coaster and you think the roller coaster is going to fly off and break, and it makes a creaky noise. It starts squeaking. 
when the roller coaster is either spinning in a circle or it's uh it's uh squeaking on the rails the first thought a lot of people have at least i have is the fact that wait a minute this thing might fall off this thing might break off or when you driving on the highway doing the speed limit and you see a pile of cars uh colliding with each other in front of you and you're going at a decent speed but you know you only got a few seconds to stop and if you don't stop you're going to be mangled flesh with metal just like the rest of them so your life flash before your face am i making it clear what i'm talking about or if somebody shoots at you from a distance and you actually hear the bullet wheeze past your ear you know that if you moved your head a couple of inches to the left you're not going to be on human earth any longer. You're done for. There's nothing worse for a little child than a six-year-old or a 12-year-old child running down the street from a bulldog, a rabbit bulldog, that is, chasing this child. And the child is running as fast as their little legs can go. That child's life will be changed forever. Are you comprehending what I'm saying? I don't think any of that. I don't. I really do not. Uh, you have your own opinion. But nature is raw. It's raw. When you go to... When I went to a nursing home and I visited some of the elderly people, especially for Christmas, or just randomly going there to visit them and to take care of them and pay my respects to the elders, no one was there but them. I would speak to the nurses. I would speak to the, the coordinators that were there. And I will ask them, have anybody came to visit Mrs. Uh, you can, I guess we can still call them Walter and Jane, the next, the other version of them. And they don't show up. The grandchildren will ignore them. The grandchildren don't want to. The grandchildren may come to see them once every six months as if the elderly have that long to exist. I'm just being honest. They don't. When they're at that point, they're already in a wheelchair. They're already full of gray hair. They already got health complications. They got to take their medications. They're walking around this elderly place and they don't know. They don't know where, if tomorrow is going to be here. But yet their grandkids ignore them. And some of them don't even know they exist. They just put them in a nursing home and forget all about it. It's done. I did my job. They're in a nursing home, and I'm going to continue to live my life. They live there, but grandma and grandpa are still living. Now, I did not, I didn't visit them for the past uh, few months because of all the chaos that's been going on in the West. And uh, there's been different implications that has been involved. There's been a couple of changes. There have been things called the loft that's been, create, that's been created for the elderly people. So I can tell you what's going on today. So I'm going to speed myself up and, and probably visit them sometime when I get a chance to. But however, when I did, the experience made me walk away from that place like a pale ghost. I didn't, the, the thought of being an elderly, the thought of being old, the thought of not making a path or a family where we support each other, where we or there's that somebody's going to be there to still hold my hand and appreciate my life or share my life with me it was a horrible fear. It was a terrible fear. As a matter of fact, I may get over the fact that a dog bit me or chased me down the street. I may get over the fact that I almost lost my life. I may get over the fact that, uh, I could have, well, of course, I mean, since I've survived, but could have fallen down off the skyscraper. That that may be a passing phase. It either is or isn't. Either you fall or you're not going to fall. But you're not going to you're not going to forget the experience. But when you know it's coming, listen. When you know and you live long enough to do so that you're going to be elderly one of these days. You know it's coming, like. You may not you may not know that you're gonna have a, a bullet wheeze past your ear or a dog's gonna chase you or you're gonna be on a skyscraper or something like that. You may not know that, and it may or may not happen, depending on what type of life you live. But as you grow older and mature and you live long enough, you know it's you know you're gonna be old one of these days. 
you know you're going to need somebody there to hold your hand or to help you or you're not going to be able to go to the bathroom on your own and you're going to have to depend on the nurses to do so you're going to have to depend on the water bag next to you you're going to have to depend on someone to come in and mop the floor or to clean you up or to turn you over or to feed you food that you can't cook any longer because now you are dependent on everybody else you are dependent on the world you are no longer I'm a strong and independent PhD doctorate degree moron. Now I am a dependent. I depend now on just about everybody to help me in my elderly lives. I need somebody to lean on. I need somebody that's going to love me enough to hold my hand when I don't have a cane and allow me to rest on them because I can't stand on my own any longer. There's nothing there is, but it is a very beautiful thing. It's a very beautiful aspect of your life to have someone to love you in those days and years, to have someone who has been there with you during tough times to still be here with you during your tough times in an elderly age. Let me tell you something that Walter and Jane is doing. See, Walter and Jane, when they go to a restaurant or a store, they don't pull out their smartphones at the dinner table. They sit and they talk with each other. Walter and Jane, they don't pull up an Instagram and try to uh, try to get likes try to get subscribership you know they don't they don't go around they don't go around youtube and try to pretend as if there's just try to animate themselves and try to uh what do you call that try to entertain the crowd of people on a general basis they're too busy relaxing living life taking boat trips going across town half of them may have they may have their facebook but they're not interested as much as you do and they think they hit because now they they, they figured it out because somebody likes some of their posts, their pottery, their plants, their garden, whatever he has in the garage, his antique shop, or whatever she got going on for herself. And it's kind of sad. It's a double whammy. I shouldn't talk about it, but it's the facts and it's the hardcore truth. That it's something that old age causes you to mature and change your ways. Because when you was younger, yeah, you can show your booty online. Of course you can it's young enough. It's not wrinkled. It's still up. It's still tout. It's still round. But when you get older, because you're older, you can't do it any longer. So it's not you that stopped yourself. It's nature that stopped you. Because nature is God. Nature is God. It's a shame that it takes the force of nature to prevent people from destroying themselves. And when they get older, they're, they're, most people will say, well, I just can't do that anymore because I'm too old to do it. Well, why don't you stop doing it when you're young enough to stop doing it? So that means the average individual, when they're in that situation, whatever the situation may be, whether they was a dancer, a stripper, they were uh, uh, they were a PR, and whatever it is, Instagram model, that means if if they could keep doing it forever, they will do it forever and destroy themselves in the process. Self-termination. That's what it's called. Self-termination of their phylum, of themselves, of their gene pool. Why not have self-dignity? Why not have some type of standard to stop when you can? It's almost like you want somebody to you want somebody to be with you, love you, and honor you. Not because you're their only option, but because they chose you out of the multitude of options. Let me say that again. It's like when you are a millionaire, you're a millionaire, and you go to a car lot that has 100 cars in the lot. You have an option. You can buy any car on that lot. And instead of getting any of the ones in the front row or the back row or the middle row, you see something over on the side and you choose that car out of the multitude of cars that you can buy there's something special about that car 
that's when you have a sense of self or a sense of standard or a sense of self-control or a sense of uh, greatness that you have built up from your own value points. Therefore, with that, when you make decisions in your life and who are you going to saddle up with, I didn't say settle down with, I said saddle up with, it should not be because they're the only person before you. They're the only ones that you can reach out to. It should be that's who I chose. But when you choose them, it must be if you're, it depends on what you want. If you're trying to be like Walter and Jane, they cannot be, there cannot be projections of the modern day ideas or ideology. They cannot be like these, let, let me say it, morons today. They can't be like the bozos who go along with the program. And I'm progressive and I just, you know, let's keep building and making, let's keep moving forward because we are, we are evolving. No, ma'am, sir, y'all de-evolving. You're only you in you evolving in technology, but you de evolving in human sense. Our God given common sense. That's where you de evolving. You think you're going forward in your humanity, which you are actually going backwards because we're discussing things that should be common sense. We're discussing things that should have you should have already known a long time ago, but now we gotta start all over again. Like what is love? What is commitment? What is standard? What does it mean to give your uh, virtue away? What does it mean to sell your oats? What does it mean to settle up or settle down? What does it mean to be consistent? How did grandma and grandpa survive this long? You don't know those things because it was taken out of your basics. So you got to learn the basics all over again, which is a significant sign that you didn't evolve. You're de-evolving. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this damn conversation today. Again, there will be no such thing as a red pill if you evolve. We're just studying what have always been there the whole time. We're just straight dummies. So in order for us to see that point where we need this person to be there, and we will, we have to make sacrifices that most of us aren't willing to make. Because we're too stuck in what's going on today. You're going to have to go backwards to go forward because there's a detour in front of you. No, how about this? There's a roadblock in front of you. And if you try to go through that roadblock, it's going to be a catastrophe. That means you're trying to force a future through the continuance of your technology, your mishaps, your false ideas, your deceptions, and your lies that has been planted on you a long time ago. And by those who have nothing but a potential and a reason and a purpose to destroy and keep you separated as a single man and a single woman and not a family. So when I said in the first audio that my choices of uh, sexual preference is based on protection, okay, is because if the 90% or 80% of uh, the potential of a good relationship is out there to burn me and destroy me, I need to know how to protect myself. I need to know how to provide for myself. I need to know how to keep myself clean. Do you got what I'm saying? If I know that I am non-monogamous, I am not going to sit here and uh, be with multiple people who have the potential to be with multiple people so I can get multiple STDs. Are you out of your mind? That's why I said you keep it at home. If I know I need to be, uh, again, if I need to be taken care of, if I need that sort of satisfaction, I know where to go and I know where it is and I know that it's safe and I know that it's right. And the moment that I sense or I know or I comprehend or I get the information that it isn't right, it can it can take its non-right ass out right out of the door quick and in a hurry and be replaced with a clean, healthier, uh, uh, more loyal and committed subject of my desire, which is going to be right. But you cannot do that when you operate in the modern day programming that's going to prevent you of Either your internal or external success or is going to prevent you from being a Walter and Jane. Most times it's going to prevent us of having somebody there to hold our hands when we are in our elderly struggling years. And most times, guess what? They don't.
what you end up finding is a lonely, leftover, broken-hearted, elderly person with nobody to come and see them nor love them. Most people that are there, they just volunteers, like I was a few times. Evidence. Volunteering. Do you want somebody to volunteer or you want somebody to be there because they really care about you and they are your family, they are your lover, are they your husband or your wife to be there for you? So substitutions have to happen. You want to substitute? You want people to come and feel sorry for you? Or do you want to live your life right and find that right person or be committed and loyal and say, well, you know, I'm, I am strong and independent, but I know I need each. We need to bond each other. We need to we need to uh, work together because the end is what's important. The means to the end, the end, the results is what's going to happen. The results is what's going to be uh, the ending chapter of our life when we are in our elderly years. Even if you don't see the future, it's best to be prepared for the possibilities. The possibilities that may come your way. The possibilities that you might need to depend on someone. The possibilities that you're not going to be as rich as you thought you would be. The possibilities that your river is going to run dry. No, we don't know what the future holds, but we do have significant signs to see what will lead to a future. The whole programming of your new society is to blind the ignorant from reality. It's to blind you of the end result or the end road. I made an audio and I think it's up there. It still should be here. It's called The End Road is Raw. The End Road is Raw. The end road is raw. That's the title of the audio that I made. I think I've already up. I think I've uploaded that one. If I didn't, I might have to go back and do it again. But it was very harsh in that one. And this audio pretty much it pretty much tethers to that one. Nobody wants to think about it. No. Of course, we don't want to think about when we get older and we elder and we get our nursing home and we're sitting in our rocking chair or are our, our being pushed around in a, a, a wheelchair. But when you think about these things now, you will realize that you thinking that you are self-sufficient, you're independent, you don't need nobody. You're just this this person who want to push everybody who really cares about you away, women specifically. When you're thinking that you're going to pick somebody who is the highest bidder or who is the greatest person in your in your surrounding or your environment, you you will realize that that isn't the person that's going to be Walter next to you. Because you will fight with that type of person. You're going to fight with him who you thought was the breadwinner, who you thought was going to be the top notch, the top alpha. He's only in that position because... The majority of women want him to be in that position, meaning most women chase after him. So you're interested in him thinking that that's the one you need to settle down with. But you're wrong. You are dead wrong. And you're going to be elderly wrong. You're going to be in a wheelchair wrong. You're going to be sleeping alone on the loft, looking upon the green, the greenery of the grass alone wrong. You're going to be laying next. To, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to try to be real nice. What I mean by laying next to your dog wrong, what I mean is when you're laying down in your bed and your dog is curled up next to you and no human person is. When your cat is sleeping at the foot of your bed because no other human man is going to do it, you're going to be laying down wrong. You're going to be looking at life differently when you're when you're 60 years old, when you're 50, 55, 56, 60, 70 years old. You're not going to care about getting the bag. You're not going to, that Louis Vuitton bag ain't going to look good to you anymore. Going out with the most expensive dress and driving in the most fancy car isn't going to be the most important thing to you. What's going to be important to you is the remaining years of your life and spending that with people that you love and care about. I hear these conversations with the elderly people that I conversate with. I talk to them. They never talk about their money. They may say what they used to be, 
but they talk about what's most important today. They talk about their grandkids. They talk about their kids. They talk about their ex-husband or their ex-wife. That's what they talk about. Because time will not be reversed for them. They can't go back. But yet, I'm standing before them, not their grandchild, not their granddaughter, and definitely not their husband or their wife. Just them alone, just me. You say, how is this happening? Why is it possible? Because that's the world you live in today. All about getting the bag is all about me. Right now, we don't care about the end result. We don't care about the last the last days of our lives. We don't care about that. We don't care about when we can't tear, take care of ourselves. So, so we rather burn the bridges. We rather burn up the road. We rather eat everything we want to do. Do whatever we big enough an adult to do. And we don't care about making preparations for the later years in our life. So we don't, we never are Walter and Jane. We can't even compare to Walter and Jane. You can't even understand what Walter and Jane went through. You can't even understand the notebook story, as a matter of fact. You won't even allow yourself to get to that point where you can meet or be with your husband. Or, oh, okay, you ready? I know y'all ready for this. Most of, I'm gonna tell you like it is, most of you women burn your bridges so bad you got so much of an attitude. You're so sassy. You're so cocky. You are all in your masculine energy where no man wants to be around you anyway. So whatever husband, boyfriend, or person that you end up with, he's not going to be patient enough to read a book with you and sit with you um, during your elderly years and you, your loss of memory like that man did on the, on the notebook. You know what? You, because you have been an irritation for so long. He don't love you no more, especially if he has options. And as a matter of fact, when men age, they get better. He might be out somewhere else. You'll be sitting there by yourself with the memory loss. Knitting and yarning are playing bingo, bingo in the hall. Eating your favorite dish and food out of a soup bowl. Because you got no more teeth. And he will not be sitting next to you. He, Walter, is going to be sitting next to a different Jane because you was a bad B. Because you didn't need a man because you were so masculine. Because you can do it all by yourself, so you pushed him away. So therefore, you will never have a notebook romanced life. Because you never wanted it. And clearly, I hate to say it, but you never deserved it because you didn't work for it. You thought because of your female privilege since you was a, uh, what do you call that, uh, since you was an adolescent, will survive. You thought that was going to endure for the remaining years, for the rest of your life. Since from age one to age 80, you thought you was going to be good and well. But guess what? There's a place for everybody who is ignorant to reality. There's a place for everybody who wants to step on nature. There's a place for everybody who ignores the significant signs of preparation. Walter and Jane was a beautiful display before me. The notebook was a good idealistic story and a possibility. But guess what? Not today. Because chivalry is destroyed. Honor is destroyed. Loyalty to the unity of marriage and commitment is destroyed. Having decent standards and morality of how you should treat each other is destroyed because we're too selfish. We're at the point where it's a me, me situation. I am my own person on my own island. I'm independent and I'm the one who needs to be showered with gifts and luxury and money. So therefore, when you put yourself in the situation where you're like, okay, now I need to find a husband and you 35 going on 40. You're not going to find a Walter during that time, ladies and gentlemen. You might as well forget about it because Walter is going to. M more men are getting the red pill than they are drinking water. Do you understand? More men are getting the RP knowledge than they ever used to be when Uncle Simp was telling him, happy wife, happy life, in his ear. And the, the pulpit pimp kept spitting in his face telling him, is buried and married than a bird. More men are being smarter than that. 
they're able to see your worth and how you've been carrying yourself and what you've done to yourself. So he realized he's not going to sit here and waste his time trying to read a book to you because you lost your memory because you kept uh, going out to girls night out taking shots. Smoking funny sticks, doing whatever you want to do, hanging out with the bad boys, having fun or working a nine to five all the time every day on your career to the point where you forgot yourself. You forgot yourself so much where he has no choice but to forget you also. So, sadly enough, the Walter and Jane getting out of the car and one person leaning on the next person, you might as well forget about it. You're going to be leaning on your cane. Some of you are going to be leaning on a, a grocery cart. Some of you are going to be leaning on an on a electric scooter. Some of you are going to be leaning on nothing. Because that's what you worked hard for. You will receive it. This is Leon C. A.K.A. Morpheus. I can't tell you in no other way or fashion. I tell you nothing but the truth. Whether you like it or not. That's reality. But you're going to meet it on your own one way or the other. And it depends on how you play your cards. You can change that particular fate.